should you sell spray bottles for cleaning on Amazon? In this video, you're gonna find out. So welcome to Niche Spotlight. In this video, we are going to analyze the niche. Have a look, see if there's an opportunity. Will you make money or will you lose it if you sell a product? So what is this? It's very simple, empty bottles to put cleaning liquid in uh, that people can buy and if they want to make their own cleaning liquid or they have a big vat of cleaning liquid or they're just really passionate about cleaning, then they buy these. Right, pretty simple, pretty boring product. That's what we like because it's gonna sit there and it's gonna sell for years, all right? It's not gonna blow up on Instagram, become a trend uh, and then fizzle out and never be seen again. We wanna avoid products like that. But should you sell it? Is there enough demand? Well, I'm gonna start off by quickly recapping the Smash Hit product radar and then breaking down each part of this radar in the niche to see if it's a good niche or not. So what are we looking for first? Always start with high demand, right? High demand. Is there enough money in the niche already? That's the question you wanna ask yourself. If there is, you can make money too. Secondly, low competition. In other words, is there enough room for you to compete? Can you stand out among all the other sellers in the niche? If you offer something special in this niche with your product, will customers see it or will it be swamped by all the established sellers who are already there? Thirdly, low hassle. Is it gonna be easy to import the product to get it shipped to customers for customers to open it? Are you gonna get loads of returns? Are you gonna get loads of breakages? Is it really big? Is it gonna be expensive to ship? Or is it all gonna be easy and smooth? Right, we want smooth. And then finally, is there a gap in the marketplace? In other words, is there room for us to improve and do something better than the other sellers? So this is what we're gonna find out in today's video. We're going to use my handy dandy smash hit product analysis cheat sheet, which I'm using uh, with an inbuilt scoring system to see whether this niche is worth bothering with or not. Where are the opportunities? Where are the issues? Remember, there's no such thing as a perfect niche on Amazon. It does not exist. There's just opportunities. And if you can find a way to maximize the opportunities, you'll make money. So let's start off with high demand. Are there at least three 3K sellers in this niche? Three sellers making at least 3,000 pounds a month in revenue. If there are, it's a good sign. It means that people like to buy this product. The sellers are probably making at least a grand a month profit. That means you have a chance to do that as well. So we're gonna use AMZ Scout for this analysis. We're gonna hit the uh, extension button. Um, you can use any tool you want to analyze the niche. Helium 10, AMZ Scout, Jungle Scout, Amazel, uh, Zon Guru, I mean the list just goes on and on and on. I like AMZ Scout, it's just my preference. Um, in fact, I'll put a link in the description if you want to get a free trial so you can go and try this out. And you can use, I think, up to 15 searches. You can get the Chrome extension and have a look at this niche yourself as well. So, are there at least three sellers making £3,000 a month in sales? Well, yes, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sellers doing 3k a month so there's lots of demand in this niche All right people really want to buy spray cleaning bottles now maybe this could have been compounded because of uh, the pandemic and people want to be extra hygienic maybe um, the only way to figure that out would be to look at historical data in fact if we click on one of these uh, listings we can click on product history um, I don't think it goes back f further than two years though um, so it might not be super helpful to figure that out. Um, it goes back to August 2020, which is when I assume it would have started to peak anyway. But you could also have a little look on Google Trends. Um, if we go to google.com forward slash trends. We can type in spray cleaning bottles. And let's see if there was a little peak after uh, the beginning of COVID. I'm just curious. Um, okay, so as you can see, 25 out of 100 interest over time score, roughly. That's technically 20, around 2017. 
2018 we got up to that's around what is that 70 this is Google's own scoring system they have for how many searches are being generated uh, around a period, time period and then May 2020 as expected a hundred so that was when it peaked people were really interested in this search term around that time and it's been up and down since but generally a little bit higher since 2020 but now it's kind of it fluctuates sometimes it's high sometimes it's a little bit lower almost back to where it was in 2019 so not a huge peak during COVID and it doesn't look like it's going to go back down it looks like they're still popular still kind of as popular as they were but there was a bit of a peak and increase during COVID so in other words it's not going to completely fizzle out uh, in the next few years it's probably still going to be relevant good to know anyway there's definitely three uh, three K sellers. There's more than that. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So because of that, we can check off this box and say, "Yep, definitely high demand there." And out of twenty, I'm going to give it a sixteen. Not the highest demand I've ever seen, but definitely good because number one best sellers making twenty-seven thousand pounds a month, which is fantastic and there's lots of sellers doing quite well so it's a good niche there's definitely demand what about low competition well we want to check the number of established sellers an established seller is someone with 500 reviews or more and we want to make sure there's no big brands competing who will just take all the sales and dominate so let's start with the established sellers how many sellers have 500 reviews or more well there's one two three four five six six sellers with 500 reviews or more so to answer the question no there isn't five or less established sellers there's more than five which means this niche is a little bit competitive it might be a little bit difficult to compete in you might have some challenges you're going to have to offer something special into the niche your listing is going to have to be really good it's going to have to stand out and you're going to have to probably spend a little bit extra on advertising now it's not like 20 established sellers, so it's still in the kind of ballpark, it's okay, but if there was like three or two, it would be much easier. That's just something to bear in mind. As far as I can see, I don't think there's any big brand uh, really dominating. I don't recognize any of these brand names. Um, Cymax, we can Google it just in case that's something, but I don't see anything really significant there. All right. Yeah, apparently this is a privately held e-commerce company but it's not like I don't know SIF or something like that uh, which is a huge named brand if they had their own brand of uh, empty spray bottles I don't think they would but if they did that would be hard to compete with because everybody knows SIF as you can see uh, they have the logo here so you can tell they're an established brand when they have this bits of information. When their product is being sold in all different retailers, they're usually a big established brand. If we go back to Cymax, none of that stuff. Right? You can't see any of their products being sold in like Waitrose or whatever. Just a little bit of information about the company. So, no brand. So low competition, there's no brand, but there's also more than five established sellers. I'm going to give it an 11 out of 20 right it's not perfect it's not terrible um, but there is definitely a little bit of competition what about low hassle is this product low hassle so the first thing I like to ask uh, when we're analyzing a products hassle levels the hassle o meter right is can we make it ourselves is it a really complicated product with circuit boards electronics etc um, or is it something quite simple and now this does have some kind of mechanical moving part which is the spray trigger but it's not that complicated I mean, if I really wanted to I probably would know how to make one of these things um, again I'm not ever going to do that but it's like I get it I get how it's made it's a couple of bits of plastic it's a very simple design right it's not complicated like a dehumidifier or something where I just have no conceivable idea of how to even start building that if I really wanted to, I probably could make this myself. So I'm going to say yes, we can make this ourselves. The reason why I asked this question is 
Basically, the more complicated your product is to manufacture, the more things could go wrong. If there's circuit boards, electronics, cables, batteries, I mean, it just takes one tiny little bit of soldering to be off and your product doesn't work and you get a return. And this could happen to like 80% of your stock. And if you're manufacturing in China, I mean, this happens all the time. So the more simple the product, the better. Stay away from electronics. Next thing, is it a low hassle category? It's a good indication that it's a low hassle product if it's in a low hassle category. Well, it's in home and kitchen, which is one of our low hassle categories. We've got home and kitchen, baby, sports and outdoors, pets, and stationery and office supplies. So it's in there. So let's say yes for that one. Is it not seasonal? Definitely not seasonal. People want to clean things all year round, right? It's not like a Christmas tree or something. So easy to manage the inventory. And what about the dimensions? Is it easy to import? Is it small and light? Or is it huge, bulky, complicated, expensive to ship from China and also to the manufacturer? Well, 15 by 10 by 20 centimeters. Yeah, fits in a shoe box. So good. 150 grams, very light, right? So yeah, the dimensions are good. Now I'm assuming uh, people sell these in different packs, packs of two, I think that's a pack of three, pack of five. So obviously the more you sell in a pack, higher quantity, the bigger it's gonna be. So it might be worth just double checking um, different quantities of the bottles and seeing if it's still low hassle, let's say if you do a set of four Oops, clicked on your ad. Sorry, mate, I probably just charged him two quid. Sorry, bro, I'll buy you a pint if you're watching this. But a uh, pack of four, is that still low hassle? It's worth checking. Well, 24 by 24 by five, yep, yeah, that's good. Generally, if all the dimensions are under 30 centimeters, you're okay. Uh, and this weight is 140 so still light so yeah pack of four still light probably means a pack of five pack of six is still going to be light as well so i'd say yeah dimensions looking good Alrighty. so for low hassle i'm going to give it a 17 pretty low hassle it's got a bit of a mechanical thing it's got the trigger which potentially could go wrong um but generally simple small light easy to import easy for the customer to use they don't need a manual to learn how to use it you just take it out put the liquid in and spray right pretty simple what about a gap in the marketplace is there stuff we can improve on in the in the market first thing i like to look at is issues are there any issues with the current products let's have a look at the number one bestseller and, and see on the listing if there's any obvious problems so i'm going to click on reviews i'm going to click on one star and see what people are complaining about. Spray bottles not working and would like a refund. Okay, so what's this an indication of? It's an indication that could be a hassle. Why? Because the mechanical thing, the trigger, could have been uh, not manufactured properly, which could indicate that when you get your bottles made, if you import some, you could have the same issue. Right? So this is the problem, if you have any moving parts on your product then it could cause a bit of a hassle. It's not the end of the world, but it's just something to, to remember. Now I'm assuming this person received a faulty product, it's probably not an issue with all of the products that are shipped to customers. So it's not necessarily something we would aim to improve on specifically, but still something to take into account. This person says, disappointed, small trigger with sharp edges. Interesting, okay, so we can offer a product with a bigger trigger, perhaps, something to improve on. Doesn't work, maybe it's uh, a faulty product, like a one-off. Useless, says this person. Squashed, usable but unusable. <laughs> like my ex. I don't even want to know what that means but both have very poor spray pumps. Okay, so doesn't spray powerfully on there enough? Yeah, there is no power behind the pump action. Every third force or spray action doesn't work. Okay, so you could have a better spray mechanism on your bottle. So there is a few things you can improve on. By the way, if you're gonna go into a niche and you're gonna try and add value, don't do what I do and look at the reviews for two minutes and come up with some rough guesses. Like you want to spend like a good few hours scouring through all of the products on page one, looking for patterns, things that customers have said repeatedly that are issues with the products, and then 
improving on it because that's how you're going to really add value and, and offer a product that customers really want to buy and that's how you win on Amazon right I'm just giving you a few examples but yeah there's things we can improve on so yes there's issues in the niche good are there any bundles on page one so is anyone offering spray bottles plus something else um, well this one comes with something some kind of funnel uh, so no there are bundles on page one this one comes with something else like a little Pora, I think that is so no there are some bundles on page one now there's not many but there are a few now, if you want an easy way to improve on a product just bundle just offer something bonus free bonus with the product an extra I don't know cloth or something to go with the spray nobody's done that so that could be a way to improve on the product but there are some bundles so I've got to say no so what about the gap then I'm gonna give it a 15 out of 20 because there is a gap there are issues with some of the, the best sellers there are some bundles on page one so there's opportunities but it's not the biggest gap I've ever seen finally what about my hunch for this niche we've looked at a lot of the data right we've done all of the work now we're going to look at the gut feeling I have for this niche um, based on my intuition and my experience as an Amazon seller so I think overall the, the revenue is good there's quite a lot of sellers making money so even if we're like number five bestseller we'll probably still make a couple grand a month profit so it could be a good uh, niche a little bit competitive so it could be a, a bit annoying uh, to sell in the other thing though I always get to this on the hunch uh, part of the process is the price the price is low so again making profit with quite a low price point uh, below 15 pounds is challenging not impossible by any means but it's challenging so that's why my hunch for this niche isn't really uh, that strong I think yeah you can make money but definitely do a test batch definitely find out how much you can charge then do your numbers then order the, the larger amount um, of stock I mean I would aim to charge 20 pounds if I was offering something in this niche and really premium spray bottles really good quality really good branding uh, make it better than everybody else's make sure that spray mechanism is amazing uh, solve all the problems in the niche bundle and offer great packaging as well and if you do that you could probably charge 19.99 make more profit than everyone else market more aggressively spend more on advertising and the value wheel will spin you will become the number one bestseller and you'll win this niche if you can do that you can win but it's not going to be easy because a lot of the prices are quite cheap so because of that my hunch for this niche I'm gonna give it hmm, I'm gonna give it an 11 out of 20 because yeah there's opportunity there's also a lot of issues um, and that price point really is quite low so we've done a good pretty deep dive into this niche actually it's almost been 20 minutes you've been watching me for 20 minutes I feel bad for you listening to my voice for that long you must be falling asleep but let's finalize this and get our score so 16 for high demand plus 11 for low competition plus 17 for low hassle plus 15 for gap plus 11 for hunch gives us a score of 70 out of 100 is there opportunity yes are there issues yes as always no such thing as a perfect niche could be good i think making profit in this niche might be a little challenging but it's definitely doable especially if you can order volume could be one to test could be one to test so I hope this has given you a little bit more insight into how I research products. I hope it's helped you with your product research skills. Maybe give this niche a try. Tell me how it goes. And yeah, can't wait to see your results. So if you want some help, uh, you want me to maybe research a product for you that you can sell on Amazon, click the link on the, uh, in the description and you can grab a free Amazon Accelerator call. We'll talk about your goals, talk about where you are now, um, and we'll talk about things you need help with to build a business. And then once we're clear on that, we'll get clear on a strategy together that you can use to hit your goals and get the business off the ground. Completely free. Just apply for it in the description below. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Um, click subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I've got more coming very soon for you. And we'll catch up 
very soon.